Hey fam, this is day three aboard Norwegian Viva. Today we are on the beautiful island of Antigua. I am going to do an excursion today. The excursion is called Nelson's Dockyard and Island Drive. I chose this excursion because Nelson's Dockyard is one of those UNESCO heritage sites. So stay tuned. We are in these Antigua streets. I'm heading towards where I'm gonna meet up for my excursion. Um, a little cloudy today, um, a little overcast, slight wind, so, but hopefully it does not rain or anything of that nature so that I can have a good excursion. We are here today with the Regent at Doc, the beautiful Viva. I got some more time before my excursion starts, so let's check out this port a little bit and then I'll head back for my excursion. It's a little walk from the ship, it's not too bad. I'm a walker, but some people who are not walkers or have mobility issues, it is a little walk to get to the actual part where you can go into the shops. But my excursion is meeting up, not outside of these gates coming up, but right near the ship. These are cool. I don't see much here at the port right now. So maybe the same situation. Maybe everything is not open yet. Welcome to Antigua and Barbuda, you know, sister islands. Off in the distance family, I see two more cruise ships, Aida, Britannia. So it's four of us here today. The bus now just waiting for us to leave and go on this tour. Oh. My name is Phil Sir. I feel any other son or the son of Phil? Phil Sir. And your driver, which is the most important person here this morning, I'm going to allow him to introduce himself. Good morning, my name is Charles. Good morning. You can call me King Charles today. I'm the most valuable person here today. After the first stop, we are at the Nelson's Dockyard, so let's go check it out. So that's what I be, will be presenting as also showing you the present, what we're doing here presently with these buildings as also the activities that take part at the dockyard, like fishing tournaments, boat, uh, boat racing events like Antigua Sailing Week that's coming up 28th of April. So the Nelson Dockyard started as the principal British Naval Repair Station in 1725. And English Harbour is considered as a hurricane shelter because the Royal Navy could be able to stay here in the hurricane months, which is in June until November, and they would be able to repair their ships, their frigates used to then protect their colonial islands, which would be Antigua, Montserrat, British Virgin Islands. These islands were sugar islands and they were sought, looked after by the French, Spanish and Dutch colonies. So these so the Royal Navy would have to make sure that they had enough ships in the Eastern Caribbean protecting their islands. As also, they could be able to protect Antigua, which was one of their main sugar providers. Right? So we have about 40 ports in the island. Shirley Heights is one of them. And standing at Shirley Heights on a clear day, you could see Guadeloupe about 22 miles from us. So the Royal Navy used that opportunity to have intel to know when the ships are going to attack. And they would see, the, when they do see the ships coming, they raise a flag mass with a British flag that goes to these 40 ports, so 39 ports, in about 20 minutes. All right, so the island is protected, so they could always make sure that it wasn't invaded. As also, English Harbour is the only harbour capable of protecting the ships in the hurricane season. 
So this was a win-win for the Royal Navy, why they decided to ultimately build the Nelson's Dockyard here. This is the dockyard, UNESCO heritage site. I love to go to these sites, these UNESCO heritage sites. A part of history, a part of the culture of the country you're going to. It's recognized by a reputable world organization that they would call it and be a part of UNESCO Heritage Sites. After some rum punch, we get to explore the dockyard on our own. We could either do the rum punch with alcohol or without alcohol. And so now it's time to just explore this dockyard. I'm just gonna show you what is here. And then it's time to head back to the bus for further stops. So it kind of went into a circular motion. So some of the places we already came to in the beginning is here, but there is a shop. You can get some of your souvenirs here. It is raining off and on. There's a dockyard museum. So this is the Nelson Dockyard. I think that you definitely should come and see it if you come to Antigua. It's a part of the history. UNESCO recognizes it. So definitely come and see it for yourself. All right, stay tuned, more to come on this tour. It took at least 17 men to fire off one cannon at least three miles out of sea. On your right hand side, you will notice there's a displaced cannon. Once displayed, it is out of use. To the left of the cannon, guys, you'll see a slope area. That was used as a system to catch drinking water for the soldiers. In the center of the fort, this big concrete slab was used as a communication flag for area to communicate with ships that were out at sea and the different forts in the area. The room all the way to the back was used as a gunpowder room and also a hurricane shelter for the soldiers here on the island. We are now going to take this opportunity to take a look out at sea guys. Do you guys see this large home on the hilltop on the peak? That is the home of Eric Clapton. Mm -hmm. It is a 14 room home that he owns here on the island. Eric Clapton was also responsible for building the rehabilitation center Crossroad, which are those small pink roofs on the hilltop. The orange ones are private homes. The green and change of building below, that is the St. James's Club, one of our five star resorts here on the island, which is covered by the Memorial Bay and the Atlantic Ocean. As you go more south on the island, that is where the Caribbean Sea lies. This white home that you're looking at with the pyramid shaped front, guys, that was once the home of the famous Whitney Houston. The inlet right here is known as the Indian Creek. It is said to be the first settlement of the Indians here on the island, hence the reason why it gets its name. On a normal day, guys, we'll be able to see the French island of Guadeloupe straight in that direction but because of the weather today unfortunately she's not presenting herself but we used to present we used to protect our island from the invasion of the French and the Spanish but we're all friends right now so we don't have nothing to worry about so that was just a little bit description of the second place we are the block house and so it is overcast today so I'm going to try to get at least a few pictures and we're not going to be here long at all before we have to head on to the next stop. This is the view from up here. Ooh. Beautiful. 
All right, guys, just want to welcome everyone to Shirley Heights, better known as Fort Shirley. This was once a signal area slash fort that was built in the late 1700s, between 1791 to 1792. We are currently standing, guys, 490 feet above sea level. We're going to first take a look out at sea, guys. Do you see this large landmass right here? What reptile does it look like? Alligator, lovely lady. So we're going to take a look on the left leg of the alligator. Do you see a one window hut? That is Fort Berkeley. The rumbles that remain on the left hand side, guys, that was once Fort Charlotte. It was destroyed in 1843 by a major earthquake. An upcoming hurricane left it in that state. It used to run on a boom chain system. A chain was just barely lowered below sea level that was connected to both forts. It was used to protect the Nelson dockyard. So any ship that was not bearing the British flag or Her Majesty flag was not allowed entry within the dockyard. They would raise that chain and it would cut off the entire bottom of that ship, causing it to sink. If you guys look on the beach, which is known as the Galleon Beach, you will notice there's only one umbrella. That is where all the bones were buried of soldiers that were founded. The U-shaped section, guys, is where we came from earlier is the Nelson's Dockyard. Further over where you see the big yacht, where my yacht is also docked, <laughs> that is the English Harbor. All the way over, you can find the Falmouth Harbor. If you guys look on your left hand side, it is not very much clear today, but I can see it. You will see a kind of island outlining. Do you guys see it? <laughs> that is the island of Monstrat, the island with the active volcano. Last erupted in 1995, we felt the effect of that volcano eruption because all the ashes came over on the southern side of the island. But guess what, guys? We capitalized on it. We started to grow our national fruit of the Antigua Black Pineapple. One of the sweetest pineapples you can taste. Has a very high sugar content and low acidity. Makes it quite comfortable to your palate. It is still under the British territory. If you guys would have ever heard the song, Ole, 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 feeling hot, hot, hot. The guy that originated that song, he also hails from the island of Montreux. Right now, guys, Shirley Heights is used as an entertainment spot for the locals and the tourists. What used to be the cafeteria for the soldier and the guardhouse has now become a bar and restaurant. So on this Thursday and Sunday evening, the locals and the tourists will all gather on this side of the island to enjoy a live band on your right and a steel orchestra on your left. And we are currently on the dance floor. So on a Sunday evening, we'll be getting on down. I was able to get some beautiful views at this location. It's beautiful. And so you can get to see the beauty of the island of Antigua. It's beautiful. And so I think this may be our last stop unless there is a surprise or something of that nature before going back to the port. And so what do you think guys of the whole tour? This beautiful island, would it be something where you would put on your list of places to go and come to vacation or would you rather just sit on a cruise and determine for yourself what you're going to do next? So stay tuned. Fam, I'm getting ready to go to another specialty restaurant tonight, Los Lobos, the Mexican specialty restaurant on Norwegian Viva. Let me tell you a little bit about the tour. I like the tour. The reason why I like to do tours is because each tour operator will tell you about their country while you are going to the designated places on the tour. So I enjoyed it. It just showed me so much of Antigua, told me about the culture, the people. So I did enjoy the tour. And so these cruises give you an opportunity to see many countries and then you can determine on your own whether or not you want to come back to it, if you want to come back to it for a longer period of time, or if you want to come back to it for a short period of time. And so this is the benefit of doing a cruise where every day is a different port so that if you can decide, oh, maybe I'll fly to it. Um, maybe I'll go on there on a vacation, take my family there, whatever it is. So I'm looking forward to this restaurant, Los Lobos, and I'm trying to see if I like it. So this is Los Lobos. 
Nice restaurant. Can't wait to taste the food. More inside the restaurant. So here at Los Lobos, instead of bread, they start you off with some chips and salsa. And so after that, we get to order and see how the food is. So chips and salsa first. So I ordered the guac. The guac is made in-house. And so we already have the chips, so it's just gonna be the guac after that. And then I ordered just a salad. And I ordered an enchilada with chicken and with a side of rice and plantain. So I'll let you know how it tastes. Thank you. Yes. So she'll be making fresh guacamole right in front of us. This is gonna be the best we ever had. <laughs> Thank you. Here how the guacamole looks, and then I'm getting ready to dig in. It looks good, don't it? First impressions of this guacamole. So good. Oh my God. It's so good. Thank you. Five out of five. Flavorful. Really good. Stay tuned for the rest. I get super salad, so I decided on the salad. So, let's see how that tastes. First bite. Mm. It, needs, it needs a little bit more dressing. Not much flavor. It needs a little bit more, maybe a little bit of pepper. It's like it needs something added. It does have avocado in it. I would just give it a 3 out of 5. Nothing special. So I got the enchilada with mole sauce, with some rice, and some plantains. I'm going to show you how it looks now, and dig in and let you know what it tastes like. So the enchilada with the chicken inside. Chicken is flavorful. I think that the sauce, the mole, is a little bit too sweet for me. The rice itself. A little bit of flavor to it. Not bad. And the plantains are good. Overall, I think a three. It's not wowing me. So I think overall, like a three in general. So come and try it for yourself. So I took the meat out of the enchilada and I felt that it tasted better. So instead of a three, just by eating the food by itself without the enchilada, I thought it was like a four to five. I really enjoy it without it being in the casing of the enchilada. So as I said, come and try it for yourself. For dessert, I got the guava sorbet. I don't think I've ever had guava sorbet. This is how it looks. The guava sorbet, I'm gonna taste it and let you know what I think. Here it is. Mm. Let's see. Definitely sweet. Definitely something I've never had before in, in the flavor profile, but guava is very specific. Uh, it's okay for me. 
say 3.5 out of 5. This is okay. They have passion fruit and, and another flavor on the menu, but I wanted this because I've never had it before. So, this is my night, guys. Thank you so much for coming along this journey with me on this day three. See you on day four tomorrow. It is Barbados. I've never been there before. I'm so excited to go to that island. So come along with me on this journey. See you on day four.